Hey, what's up guys, Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to build tendon strength. So, a lot of you guys might know how to build muscle strength if you wanna build bigger biceps with muscle protein synthesis. But, what you might not know quite as much about is how to build your tendon strength with collagen synthesis. For the first portion of this video, we'll cover some of the research and some of the principles of training tendons and specifically building collagen synthesis. Then towards the end of the video, we'll give you some examples of commonly injured tendons and how to specifically build them with isometrics and eccentric exercises. So I wanna start off with this picture of an ACL before and after a competitive soccer season. This is a really interesting article about how the ACL responds to a season of training stress and can grow bigger. There's a lot of research on how to build tendons and there's also research about how ligaments respond to training as well. One thing that the authors said from this study was, Repetitive subacute trauma occurring over the course of competitive soccer season leads to microscopic tears in the ligament inducing an inflammatory response and subsequent remodeling of the ACL which results in increased volume. So we know that the specific stress that we put onto our tendons and ligaments is going to cause a training response. So now let's talk about what's the mechanism that's causing growth in tendons and ligaments versus growth in our muscles. When we go to the gym and we do full range of motion, bicep curls and chest press and other resistance training exercises, we stimulate the muscles to grow bigger. But there are specific exercises and ways of training that we can use to direct the training stress to our tendons and our ligaments. So if we wanna bulletproof our knees and build these strong, robust tendons and ligaments, then what's the best way to train to do that? Let's go ahead and look at this article to find out. This study was a systematic review of the effects of isometric, eccentric, or heavy slow resistance exercises on pain and function in individuals with patellar tendinopathy. This systematic review looked at a lot of different studies and a lot of different loading protocols and determined that isometrics can be considered grade A evidence, whereas eccentric exercises can be trusted to guide clinical practice as grade B evidence. Furthermore, they went on to say that isometric exercises appear to be more effective during competitive seasons for short-term pain relief, whereas heavy, slow resistance or eccentric exercises are more suitable for long-term pain reduction and improvement in knee function. Okay, so what does that actually mean for you? Well, that means that we can choose between isometric exercises where we're in a static position and contracting our muscles, or eccentric exercises where we're lengthening under load. Exercises like a wall sit or a Spanish squat isometric or even a leg extension isometric can all be chosen as a good in-season exercise or as something to temporarily manage pain. Over time though, we want to progress into more eccentric exercises where we're lengthening the muscle under load. You can also use isometrics as a starting point and then progress to heavier eccentric movements over time. Okay, but what about other areas of the body? So what if it's not your patellar tendon in your knee, but rather your elbow or your shoulder or your bicep tendon or your wrist and hand tendons that you wanna build? Well, the first principle that we wanna consider is that we wanna make sure that we're directing load to the specific tendon. So for example, it might seem sensible that just doing heavy back squats would load my patellar tendon, but if we're doing, for example, a low bar back squat with really heavy weight, our knees aren't very forward and even if we're going to a one rep max, we might not load our patellar tendon as much as we would with a specific isolation exercise like a leg extension isometric. Similarly, if we wanna build up the bicep tendon, we don't wanna just do an exercise like a shoulder press and expect that that tendon gets directly stimulated. Instead, we wanna isolate that exercise with something like a front raise. We can position ourselves to load our tendons specifically by, for example, putting our hand in a neutral position and then raising our arm forward or even slightly out in the scapular plane. By doing this, we're directing load specifically to that tendon. We can do this starting as an isometric, and then over time we can build it up to a heavy eccentric or a heavy slow resistance exercise, raising up and down. If your goal is to strengthen the tendons in your arms and your hands and your wrists for exercises like rock climbing and arm wrestling and things like that, then we, do, we could do just isometrics as grip strength, but we can even more specifically load the extensors and the flexors by doing targeted isolation exercises. This could be wrist extension isometrics, this could be pronation and supination exercises, or we're holding a bar and we're giving ourselves a resistance that we can barely handle on the way down and kind of assisting on the way up. Generally speaking, I would take the approach where we start with isometrics as tolerated. Maybe there's a little bit of pain with it, but we're still loading that progressively and then eventually moving on to eccentrics, which are heavy and a little bit more taxing to those tendons. 
Importantly, we want to make sure that these exercises are really heavy and challenging and reaching really strong muscular contractions. Oftentimes, it requires going to at least 70% of your maximum contractile strength and if you already have pretty healthy tendons, you might even need to go towards 90% to further build tendon strength. This means that if it's an exercise that you can do for 15 or 20 or more reps, that might just be okay as a starting point, but it's probably not the best scenario for continuing to build tendon strength. I would really encourage you guys to use enough weight and enough load that you can only do it for about six to eight reps. If you're a runner or a swimmer or a cyclist and you do a lot of low load repetitive exercises that involve a ton of repetitions of not very much load, then it's really important that you're supplementing that training with tendon specific work that's actually gonna build those tendons back up. For runners, that often comes in the form of calf raises. Again, trying to make these challenging, you can start with isometrics and heavy holds and then build up to full repetitions on one leg. After our last video on this, we got a couple of questions about supplements and I actually would recommend a collagen supplement or a joint supplement if you're dealing with a tendon issue. These supplements don't tend to have a significant effect on muscle protein synthesis, but they can be beneficial for collagen synthesis and joint health and tendon health. I'll link the one that I use in the description below. All right, let's recap what we've learned. Isometric exercises are not very good for building muscle protein synthesis. They more so direct the training stimulus to the collagen synthesis and to the tendons. So if your goal is to load your tendons and build collagen synthesis, isometrics are a good place to start. Over time, you wanna build up from that isometric to a heavy resistance exercise that includes a concentric and an eccentric component, maybe even some eccentric overload where that lowering phase is extra heavy. At this point, you're gonna get a combination of muscle protein synthesis and collagen synthesis to strengthen that tendon and the muscles surrounding that area. If there's a specific tendon that you're working on building up, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And if there's any specific exercises I can recommend to you, I'll try to do that. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.